In this video, we're demonstrating five scroll saw projects that are ideal for the one you love. Getting straight into our first project, we are demonstrating how you can make your own picture frame in wood. Once you have finished marking your design on the wood itself, we then begin the process of making our photo frame. So the first thing you do is to drill a hole in preparation for doing your pierce work. This project is ideal for beginners because we haven't got other skills. Some of the other projects we demonstrate, you've got things like wood carving skills that we incorporate into the process. But this one is mainly working using the scroll saw. So after drilling that pilot hole, we cut the surround. It's like a adapted heart-shaped design. And then we do our internal cuts. Once you have finished cutting out your picture frame on the scroll saw, we then make a little base that we can attach to the picture frame. This just makes the base a little bit thicker and that makes it easier for you to stand your picture frame up. Once we've done these parts, we then move on to our belt sander to sand all the parts nice and smooth. If you haven't got access to a belt sander, hand sanding will suffice. Once we've finished with the sanding, we then super glue our base to the frame itself. Now the other part of this process, we have to think about keeping the picture in place. So what we do, we create two little pieces of wood to secure that photo in place. Now these are usually quite thin pieces of wood and they'll act as two little flaps just to hold the picture in the place that we want. You cut them out on your scroll saw you then mark out on the picture frame itself the position that you want your two little clips in and then screw it to the back of the frame. You can then choose the picture that you like, cut it down to the shape and size so it can't be seen from the front, adjust the two clips to hold it then in position. So there we are, that's our first project is to make a photo frame using our scroll saw. On to our second project, and that is to make coasters. Now we've demonstrated this before, but these coasters have got a, a sort of theme suitable for the one you love or an occasion like Valentine's Day. The reason for this, we're using a heart-shaped design and an outline of a rose. A method you'll see us using here that we've demonstrated on several occasions before is to screw two pieces of wood together, meaning you can make two coasters instead of just making one. As you cut the outline, the scroll saw, it will cut your two coasters out at the same time. As always, you mark out your design. So again, you can either stick it down using glue or mark it out using carbon paper. We prepare our coasters for being made by drilling the holes that will be used later on for doing the pierce work and then we are on to using our scroll saw. When you go on to using the scroll saw, uh, I would actually suggest doing your scroll saw work in a specific order, and I'll explain why. I would do the pierce work first. The reason for this is because you have those two pieces of wood stuck together, you're keeping them stuck together whilst you do your pierce work. So you're making both at the same time. If you did your outline, 
you are freeing your coasters from the solid blocks. This means you would have to re-stick them together or re-screw them together. Just makes life a lot more difficult. Differently to our previous demonstration of making a coaster, in this example, we are using our hand carving skills as well as the scroll sawing skills. So for anyone who is interested in scroll sawing, by developing your hand carving skills, it can just give another dimension to the work that you do. If you're not interested in hand carving, don't worry, these products can be made and be perfectly acceptable without any hand carving at all. By using those hand carving skills though, we can give some beautiful detail to the heart. We can bevel that edge to give it a nice shape. And the rows, you can create layers, giving the product depth and character, making it a really special and unique item. The rows then, we hand carve it all out, get all of those petals folding behind one another. You can put your coaster on a belt sander or hand sand it ready for finishing. On to our third product. And this is jigsaw themed ideas. It was based on an idea of a key ring for couples. So we've demonstrated key rings before. But what you do in this case, you mark it all out, you then cut it out on the scroll saw, you can hand carve a little design, in this case we're going to do a little flower, and then afterwards you cut the key ring into two halves. So you have one half for the one partner and another half for the other partner. The two pieces then fit together like a jigsaw. As you can see, we've also demonstrated how this idea can be used for a wide variety of products. You can make a little plaque, a little decoration almost, with two hearts and using that jigsaw theme to put the two pieces together. That's the beauty then of working with the scroll saw, is you can make items in the style of a jigsaw, putting them together to create a unique item. In this example of our jigsaw keyring, I have carved a little flower design on it. So what you do, you carve your design first, you then take it back to your scroll saw and you cut that jigsaw design, those two interlocking halves. Once you separated them, you can use a pillar drill or a hand drill to drill two holes, and that's what we will put our keyring clip upon. Sand everything down. Our plaque then, we stick together. So you stick all the parts together, the two hearts interlocking as one. If you want to add something extra, you could put names on it or a date, something like that. For our keyring, we put those little cl clips on it, so one half each. On to our next project, and this one is a plaque. And we're demonstrating how you can scroll saw out words. So to start it off, as always, you mark out your design on the wood itself. You then put your pilot holes for doing that pierce work and start cutting out the project on the scroll saw. You'll see us demonstrating using two pieces of wood. And the reason for this is because our plaque has got words included upon it by using a dark piece of wood on a light colored surround, or you could do the reverse, a light colored piece of wood on a dark surround, it gives it more impact because your project has greater contrast. 
Similar to the other processes then, cut out your design. You can then hand carve any details on there. Once you've finished off the hand carving, sand it all down and stick the two pieces together, the background and the front, stick those two halves together. What you will find is that when you stick them together, they'll overlap slightly. So take it into your belt sander or hand sand it until the front and the back, until they, they are nice and even together so you haven't got any jagged edges. On to our final project, and this is making a trinket or jewellery box. Now in another video that we've got coming up, we're hoping to demonstrate a few different methods and style of boxes. But in this example, it's a fairly simple box. You'll need a piece of wood for the base, and a piece of wood for the top, and then a thicker piece of wood for the main body. You also need a very thin piece of wood, and the job of this is to make sure that the top sits inside the main body of the box comfortably. In this example, because we are making a box for the one we love, we have included a design of lovebirds sitting happily on their perch just above a heart. So we've drilled those holes in preparation for doing the pierce work so you can cut out that design using your scroll saw. You drill a hole as well for the main body of the box. You then carve the lovebirds onto the design itself so adding an extra element of flair and really bringing out the shapes of those lovebirds. Now the thin little piece of wood that you'll have seen us cutting out, that's quite important, it has two jobs to do. First, it provides a background for our lovebirds design. Secondly, it allows us to fit the top of our box comfortably inside the main body. So we carve out all of those designs, sand it out, and the final part of the process then is to stick our box together. So to start off, you stick the base to the main body, you stick that thin piece of wood, our background to our lid, to the top of the box, sand it all around so you get a nice even finish for the entire box. So as you may be aware, there are many different ways you can choose to finish your wooden items. Our method of choice is to use shellac sanding sealer. We use Fiddy's shellac. We put the first coat on, which usually raises the grain. You then rub it down with a finishing sandpaper around a, a P 240 or 320. Once you've finished sanding down, you repeat the process two more times and it should bring it up to a good finish. If you prefer using a different method of finishing, stick to whatever you are happiest with. So there you go, five simple projects for you to have a go at making for the one you love. Let us know in the comments section below which is your favourite and which one do you plan on having a go at making first? Thank you again for watching and as always we'll be back again soon with more videos.